Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. And tonight, we're going to be discussing a bizarre earthquake that happened off the shore from California in the middle of the North Pacific Ocean. Now, this quake is located just south of the Murray Fracture Zone, which is not unused to large earthquakes. In fact, the Murray Fracture Zone has seen some of the largest earthquakes in the North Pacific in recent years. And many claim they're anomalous, but they're not. You see, the Murray Fracture Zone is a submarine fracture zone in the Earth's surface. It's a long mountainous liniment in the North Pacific seafloor that you can see here. It travels all the way over here to the uplift in the Hawaiian Islands and ends just to the east of them. And many people speculated that the Murray Fracture Zone connected directly to Los Angeles and the San Andreas. But because of geologic explorations, we now know that the Mendocino Fracture Zone connects to the San Andreas and not the Murray Fracture Zone as was posited in the early 1930s. But let's get back to the Murray Fracture Zone. What is it? What are all these transverse liniments? You could see one here, here, and here in the Pacific. And what do they do? Here is the Clipperton Fracture Zone that travels all the way to Kiribati, where there's an island. And you could see all these fracture zones travel to where there's islands in Micronesia or travel to islands here in Hawaii. The Murray Fracture Zones travels to the beginning of the Hawaiian Islands and so on and so forth. So these are transverse liniments, meaning that there is left and right movement along these fractures. And there's good reason for that. This ent entire Pacific plate is being subducted in some areas well, along the entire Pacific Rim, it's being subducted. Now, how is that possible if there's no mid-ocean ridge? It's because there's a huge hot spot and uplift in the entire central Pacific that's creating this uplift. The entire Hawaiian Islands, which changed direction several tens of millions of years ago, emanated up here at the pinch point between the kuril kamchatka Trench and the Aleutian Trench. Whatever these faults are, emanated and moved that hot spot that has been creating islands for hundreds of millions of years. So there are simply places that are already fractured that can release the pressure from, wait for it, a growing earth. You see, the plate tectonic theory is, well, a little less than proven. And the reality is, if you look at all the data, the Earth is growing. And we're going to supply you tonight with the PDF from Dejzel Marvin, which came out in December of 2018, The Expanding Earth and the Implications on the Geophysics of Earth. This will get you to speed with Expanding Earth Theory, and we have other text books that we're going to share for you for free. We've shared them in previous podcasts because we believe the Earth has been expanding for hundreds of millions of years. It explains why dinosaurs could be so big and their hearts could be so high off the surface of the Earth. Well, it's because they lived on a much smaller planet before we are where we are now. So what this implicates is that the Earth has been rapidly expanding over the last 200 million years. I know that's a long time frame. But it's anyone's guess how fast this has been expanding recently. And, well, we think we have some evidence of that expansion in this earthquake. Now, let's get back to the topic at hand, and that is the Murray Fracture Zone. Now, we told you that the Mendocino Fracture Zone here connects directly with the coastal ranges and the San Andreas Fault. The Murray Fracture Zone may have been part of the transverse ranges, there's little evidence that it connects, except for down here, this island arc chain here. Do you see this? Let's blow that up. These islands are directly on the Murray Fracture Zone. So not only does it provide an area, a fault, where there can be movement and displacement of built-up energy during the expanding Earth, 
but it also creates volcanism, especially in the subduction zone where the fracture meets the subducting plate. And there's gonna be more deformation here, which means lava can move up. So these islands are clearly volcanic in origin. Did you know that? Well, now you do. So the Murray fracture zone isn't unique, and it, this is not a unique earthquake. And what do I mean by that? Well, I found a 1971 Geologic Society of America bulletin, and I'll read you the abstract. A series of earthquake epicenters express an apparent northeast-southwest trend in the ocean off Port Arguello. And that's, well, if we, f if we follow the Murray Fracture Zone, Port Arguello is right here near, near Los Angeles. Now, if reports are accurate, at least one large earthquake has been reported on the Murray Fracture Zone, and this one is a 7.5 magnitude back in 1927. So a 6 magnitude earthquake pales in comparison to that. But what it means is that the Murray Fracture Zone and all of these fracture zones, let's see if we can get them out here, the Clarion, the Mendocino, they all are very conducive to large earthquakes. There's not small earthquakes happening here, only large ones. It's a little different than when you're above the sea level here. The sea tends to pressurize these regions and you need a lot of pressure to make the move. And so most of the earthquake activity is in the large scale. Whereas if you're above the surface, their ambient pressure of air is nothing. So small quakes can happen. As you can see here, we're looking at the last 24 hours. So we have small quakes all over the place, but just one large quake on the Murray Fracture Zone. And they happen very infrequently, like decadal. But when we start to see fracture zones creating seismicity like this, it means the Earth, in my opinion, is expanding. That's mind-blowing. I hope it's mind-blowing for you. So we're going to do some more videos on the expanding Earth. But let's get back to the Murray Fracture Zone. Now, north of the Hawaiian Islands, to the base of the continental slope of Los Angeles, the Murray Fracture Zone is a continuous transverse fault that breaks apart in several pieces here and spreads out. Do you see that? But it ends right before the Hawaiian Island chain, a portion of the Hawaiian Island chain that is ex well underneath the Pacific Ocean. I mean, these are some of the oldest islands. And if we can trace them back, actually, the oldest islands are up here, all the way up near Russia. Yes, near the Kamchatka Peninsula. So the first Hawaiian islands emerged here. And as the hotspot moved, quote unquote, no, it didn't. It stayed in the same place. The earth expanded. The islands appeared to be moving on the surface. And now you can see where they are now. In fact, about to erupt. How do you like them apples? Now, the minimum relief of this feature is about 6,600 feet. That's 2,000 meters. The zone has an irregular topography of parallel asymmetric ridges. You could see that best here towards the Hawaiian Islands, but they do tighten up here. So there's multiple asymmetric ridges that end in one fracture zone as it approaches L.A., and 6,600 feet is no joke. It's over a mile high. So that's pretty impressive. Now, regional depths of the seafloor north of the fracture zone are several hundred meters greater than those to the south. The pattern of magnetic intensity of the seafloor rocks in the area appear to be displaced laterally by 90 to 200 to 420 miles. So... The magnetism of the rock to the north versus the rock to the south shows a displacement potentially between 90 and 420 miles. So 90 miles this way, 420 miles that way. That's insane. And that's quite recently geologically, in my opinion. And so the parallel asymmetric ridges, scarps, and elongate depressions are indicative of these types of transverse faults. Now, according to some oceanographers, 
and seafloor specialists, and I don't agree with this, the eastward displacement of the seafloor north of the fracture zone is only apparent resulting from seafloor spreading at a mid-ocean ridge that was active from 80 to 10 million years ago. So what they're claiming is that there was a mid-ocean ridge that develops here, and I think we can see the remnants of that, which is the emperor trough. So this mid-ocean ridge, which connected to the, this ridge here, somehow transcends into the Hawaiian Islands. And this was active, according to some geologists, during this time frame. And that is from 80 to 10 million years ago. Now, neither earthquakes nor volcanic activity occur along the fracture zone at present. And, and we're looking at that fracture zone. So this is an antique fracture zone that is no longer active, but is still present in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The Mid-Ocean Ridge is quite active, and we know that because Iceland is becoming at quite active, and the South Atlantic triple junction here is always, and here always, earthquakes. And this is all indicative. Here we have more corroboration of the expanding Earth, a 6.1 in the South Sandwich Islands. And then again here, transverse faulting at the North Pacific Ocean. So the Earth has been expanding faster than normal, and that's the only reason we get this quake. And that's due to the waning magnetosphere and the fact that we're entering a new realm, one in which mountains will be built, faults will be faulted, volcanoes will erupt, and new species will emerge on our planet. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over decades, and it's just getting started. And I hope you're prepared for the expanding Earth and the magnetic reversal. These magnetic excursions that occur tend to wake up ancient fracture zones like the Murray Fracture Zone. And that's what we're seeing now. Seismic activity near the eastern end of the Murray Fracture Zone has been documented. We're going to leave you links to the 1971 paper and the 7.5 magnitude. So a 6 magnitude pales in comparison to any of these events. But there is certainly some argument. There is no consensus on why there is movement along these transverse fractures, especially if the mid-ocean ridge that was once active 80 to 10 million years ago is now dead. What is going on? Well, I hope you do your own homework. And I hope that the Murray Fracture Zone conclusions that it's not connected to the San Andreas is true. Because if we saw a quake on the Mendocino like this, we would expect some activity to translate to the San Andreas, and that would be bad news. But the activity is south of the Murray Fracture Zone, thankfully. And it could be part of this split-off fault here. The fact that there's two faults in the area of the quake, well, is indicative that this would area would fault early if there was some swelling in this region. And we do have activity in Hawaii, and we're expecting a Hawaiian eruption anytime soon, which is directly connected to the next fracture zone to the south, the Molokai fracture zone. Are these all connected in some way? That's a good question. And maybe one will answer in another podcast, but that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. The earthquakes on the Murray Fracture Zone are not unique. They're not new. And this six magnitude is not unprecedented. In fact, it's quite insignificant. But it does tell us some things about geologic structures and the Earth as a whole. The only way to move these transverse systems is to expand the Earth. And that's a boom. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And tune in for more updates on the expanding Earth and many other fascinating topics. We love you. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Be a hero and share the video. We love you. Be safe.